Ahoy Slack Tide Nation and welcome back for another Slack Tide bike ride. Today we'll be exploring St. Simons Island again from Ghouls Inlet to the Pier Village. If you're interested in visiting the Golden Isles, this video will be offering some tips on beach access for those in the know. We'll be starting our journey today at the Gray Owl Inn, head down East Beach Causeway to Bruce Drive, head over to Ghouls Inlet, and then back down Ocean Drive to look at the public beach access on the island. Our route's a little bit funky today. You can tell we're kind of in and out, trying to make sure that we're near the ocean. One of the things that's not shown on this map is uh, we'll also take a trip out on Ghouls Inlet on the sand and, and show you what the beach looks like. We take a left on East Beach Causeway at the roundabout right in front of the Gray Owl Inn. For those of you that travel to St. Simons Island before, you're probably familiar with this trip because the majority of people come down here to East Beach to access the ocean. To the left and right of us, you'll see the marshes of Glen. This is why we're known as the Golden Isles because the color of the, the marsh grass here. In the early morning and in the, in the late evenings, the sun will strike this and give everything a golden hue. This area, the marsh can host a spectacular sunset if that's something you're interested in. We approach this bridge. This is Postel Creek. Uh, you see somebody throwing a cast net there. Here's a 360 view of the creek from Google Earth. If you've been here, if you're interested, if you have kayaks, this is where you'd launch your kayaks. Back here, you have a nice little kayak trip back here. Also, people will crab and fish from that pier. St. Simons Island is a really biking friendly community. You just gotta be careful if you're navigating the island by car and, and by bicycle. Be careful around the roundabouts. Make sure you don't know who's paying attention on their phone. Uh, just be safe when you cross those crosswalks. Straight ahead of us right there was East Beach, and that's home to the World War II Homefront Museum, and also the Coast Guard Station Public Beach Access right there, which is a great facility, lots of parking. Most of our visitors to St. Simons Island will access the beach through the Coast Guard Station. They also have some beach volleyball courts that are open to the public as well. Now we're traveling down Bruce Drive. Ahead of us is Ghoul's Inlet. It's about a mile ride down this road. This is a really nice ride. Uh, it's shaded most of the year, and you we're riding through all of these old beach cottages. There's some old historic homes down here. There are also some new homes where people have come in and built these McMansions. If you enjoy looking at homes, East Beach is a great place to ride around on a bicycle or a car. The ocean is just to the right of us and each one of these little streets offers beach access. As a rule, there's no parking for vehicles at any of these beach accesses. However, you might be able to slide in a golf cart but if you are willing to bike to the beach, these are all great access points. Just make sure you bring a bike lock to secure your bicycle. As we approach Ghoul's Inlet, I will remind you, St. Simons is an island. It's one of Georgia's barrier islands. And Ghoul's Inlet is the waterway that separates St. Simons Island from Sea Island. Ghoul's Inlet has quite a bit of parking here. I'm going to give you a little brief tour of Ghoul's Inlet here so you can look around. That's Sea Island across from you over there, across the waterway. For my money, Ghoul's Inlet is my favorite point to access the beach. If you have paddle boards or kayaks, you can paddle the creek. There are also fishing on the rocks at the back of the homes on the bottom of the screen. Depending on the conditions, you'll find people surfing the waves, kite surfing on windy days, crabbing in the shallows, or fishing the surf for whitings and sharks. If you're considering visiting someplace you've never been, Google Earth is an amazing tool and often overlooked for people to kind of get the lay of the land. Uh, this is a great photo. You see Sea Island in the distance. This is the parking area at Ghoul's Inlet and out there on the beach in the dunes. There's a small tide pool here at Ghoul's Inlet. My youngest son loves to play in it, but this wooden walkway dumps you right on the beach over the top of it so you don't have to get your feet wet. Ghoul's Inlet offers great beach access for people. If you've got a lot of stuff to take to the beach, you can get out here pretty quickly. You see we've got some great sand here at low tide. Uh, it's packed pretty tight so you can ride your bike on the beach from all the way from here to the pier if you're interested in it. Along the inlet here, there's pretty good fishing for both trout, redfish. You can also catch some flounder in here. I know some guys who will come in here and they'll gig for flounder at night when the tide and the moon is correct. If you see those breakers ahead of us out there, that's the opening to the inlet. There's pretty good fishing out here during the fall, uh, late September, October, November. You can catch some big redfish, some bull reds coming in here during the summer, July, August, and September. There'll be some tarpon out here amongst those and always a chance to catch some sharks and some whiting out here. When the tide is moving in and out of the inlet, you can stand out here with a long net and catch uh, catch crab here. They'll kind of push up against this bend in the in the inlet here with the tide and you can just scoop them out of the water. You just kind of have to be attentive and patient. If you're a pet lover, the beaches of St. Simons are all dog friendly. Uh, between Mo Memorial Day and Labor Day, uh, you have to keep your dogs out here on the beach between either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Uh, they're supposed to be on a leash. The rest of the time, people will have their dogs out here running around uh, without a leash and, and uh, you know, frolicking and playing with each other. 
As we depart Ghoul's Inlet, we'll take 15th Street up to Ocean Road. You'll get a good look of the marshes of Glen County as we take a left on Ocean. If you're a lover of architecture or you just like to ride around and look at homes, East Beach is a unique place. It's got a lot of old beach cottages down here, and then it's got a lot of modern beach homes. As we ride through here, you'll see these big houses to the left that are built on the marsh front. Basically, big glass fronts to take advantage of looking at the sunset over the Golden Isles. I lived in East Beach for about four years when I first moved to Glen County, and my favorite thing was to grab a beer in the evenings, go sit down in a chair, and watch the sunset over the marshes. As I've said many times in some of my prior videos, St. Simons is a very biking friendly community. When you're down here, you'll see families, uh, little kids riding around their bicycles, a lot of times unattended by adults. Uh, people here who are driving around are very attentive for the most part and keep an eye out for uh, the bikers and pedestrians as a whole. As we approach the traffic circle on East Beach Causeway, a left will bring us back to the East Beach uh, or the lifeguard station down there where you can access the beach. A right right here down uh, East Beach Causeway would take us back to Demery Road. We're just going to cruise Ocean Boulevard down here and uh, show you where you can access the beach in different areas on St. Simons Island. If you're visiting St. Simons Island and want to do some fishing, you see all of the Pustel Creek right here on the right. It's a great place to pick up some mud minnows for bait with a little mud minnow trap. You can also sneak out there to the marsh at low tide and grab some uh, fiddler crab. Give you a look here of two outstanding resorts here on the left side, the Beach Club at St. Simons and the St. Simons Grand. Both of them sit beachfront, uh, beautiful resorts if you're interested in staying at a place like that on your visit. A little further up on the left is Massingale Park. Massingale Park, there's lots of parking at Massingale Park and there's also uh, bathroom facilities and uh, places to kind of wash your feet off and shower off when you get off the beach. As we approach the intersection of Arnold Road, you'll see Ocean Motion Surf Shop on the left-hand side. You can rent bikes there uh, for your visit and also to kind of do some shopping from clothes, bathing suits, anything like that. There's some great restaurants around this area here, Beachcombers, you have Crab Daddies, uh, the Crab Trap, Beachcombers Barbecue here is one of my favorite places. They've got a nice little funky bar in there. So you also have Fiddlers and Barrier Island Brewing Company there as well around Arnold Road. As we approach Beachview Drive, ahead of us right here is uh, the King and Prince Resort, probably the biggest and one of the nicest resorts here on St. Simons Island. Lots of places, a couple of pools here. There's public beach access on the resort. Uh, if you see the resort right there, all the pool area, the public beach access is on either side of the resort. Uh, there's also a restaurant here, Echo. It's really good. It's, a, it's an oceanfront bar that you can go have a drink and look at the waves come in. Here's a slack tide fun fact. On my first visit to St. Simons Island almost 25 years ago, we stayed at the King and Prince Resort. Here's a shot of the Neptune Road public beach access here, uh, right here with parking, plenty of parking. This is all public parking. And it's right next to the pool bar too, so you can sneak into the pool bar and have a drink and sit on the beach. We're back on Beachview Drive, and I kind of want to show you all the different little public beach accesses that St. Simons offers. At the end of each street, there's a public beach walk out here, and this is the one at Cedar Street right here. Uh, you see there's plenty of access. You can see the ocean there in front of you, but lots of parking. Past Cedar Street, there's Myrtle Street beach access, and there's plenty of parking right there, and, and you can walk out. Sometimes at high tide, there's not a lot of beach here, so you got to pick and choose your tides to make sure that you've got some sand to set up on. But here's the Myrtle, Be Myrtle Street beach access here. You can see the walkout right there. All of these things will get you out on the sand and, and you don't have to carry your stuff very far. We'll roll back out to Beachview Drive. And I just want to make a point again that each one of these little side streets has a public beach access with a built-in walk and a wooden walkout so you can get out to the beach easy. We'll zoom by 2nd Street public beach access, 3rd Street public beach access. Not a lot of parking at these. Uh, I suggest you ride a bicycle or walk in. You might be able to fit a golf cart in there. But once we get up here to 5th Street, you'll see there's a lot of parking. This is a popular spot between 5th Street and 6th Street for a couple of reasons. One, there's some parking out here. You can get right out of the, on the sand here. If you see this, you see the ocean right there just on the other side of that seawall. Um, there's plenty of sand over here and plenty of parking. You, there's, there's parking here for probably 20 cars. And we'll take a left here on Parkway. We'll go up here to 6th Street again. There's some public parking. Uh, just along this wrought iron fence. But the other thing that you have here is you see the parking there. You also have parking at the elementary school, St. Simons Elementary. I just wouldn't go over there and park there during a school day. One of the big advantages of going to the beach here at 5th and 6th Street is there's, there's sand pretty much 24 hours a day. You see St. Simons Elementary in front of us, all the parking out in front of it during the summer, nobody's there, and uh, you can go over there and park your car, and it's an easy walk, less than 100 yards to the beach. 
As we finish this ride out down Ocean Boulevard, in front of us we've got the Pier Village. Uh, appreciate you guys spending this time with us. Please like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Slack Tides.